This video is sponsored by Longevity Technology. So hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show, where in this video we're going to talk all about mitochondria and their role in the aging process. So I'll begin by explaining the essential biochemistry you need to know about mitochondria, and then we'll look at the different theories of the mitochondrial role in aging that will touch upon our understanding of reactive oxygen species and mitochondrial DNA mutations in the aging process. And then lastly, we'll consider the question of whether targeting the mitochondria could have therapeutic potential for either health span or lifespan. So what are mitochondria then? Well, mitochondria are organelles found within your cells. And unlike the nucleus that's present as one copy, there are multiple copies of mitochondria within your cell. So what do they do? Well, if you asked any biochemistry student, including myself, what is the function of mitochondria, we would instantly reply, the powerhouse of the cell. But mitochondria are not just important in creating the energy source of the cell, which is provided by the production of adenosine triphosphate, ATP, but they also play critical roles in cell death, oxidation of fatty acids, and the generation of iron sulfur clusters. So mitochondria are vital for cell survival, but they're not just vital, they're also truly fascinating. And I know I find a lot of things fascinating, but I really mean it this time, because mitochondria have their own DNA. And whilst, as you can see in this figure here, it's a bit small compared to the entire size of the nuclear DNA, mitochondrial DNA contains the genetic information for 13 proteins and some of the RNA machinery that helps it to produce its own proteins. And if you're wondering why mitochondria has its own DNA, it comes down to their evolution. You see, initially, a long time ago, there was an endosymbiosis event whereby a cell engulfed a bacterium and over time, changes occurred, DNA was lost, and we've now got the mitochondria. Well, it's a bit more complicated than that, and it is still being investigated. Anyway, despite the fact that the mitochondria has the genetic information to produce 13 different proteins, mitochondria actually contain more than a thousand different proteins. So where are they coming from? Well, it turns out that the genes encoding these proteins are found in the nucleus. And so the mitochondrial DNA only encodes for around 1% of its proteome. And so this is direct evidence that there's communication going on between the nucleus and the mitochondria. And it actually goes both ways, with the mitochondria also influencing the nucleus. For example, the different metabolites and intermediates of the steps involved in respiration that occur in the mitochondria can also modify epigenetic marks on chromatin. And so this includes acetylation and methylation of histone proteins and also other factors such as alpha-ketoglutarate that can influence the activity of enzymes that modify the epigenetic marks on DNA and modification of epigenetic marks can influence gene expression. So there's actually loads of communication going on between the mitochondria and the nucleus and this is really important for a cell. And it enables these different functions of the mitochondria to be carried out. So therefore, unsurprisingly, mutations in mitochondrial DNA have been shown to cause a variety of different diseases. But it's a bit more complicated than normal mutations in nuclear DNA. Because with the mitochondria, there are hundreds of thousands of copies of mitochondrial DNA within one cell. And differing percentages of those cells may actually have the mutation, whilst the others don't. And so this actually results in something referred to as heteroplasmy, where there's heterogeneity in the state of mitochondrial mutations within just one cell. So what has all this got to do with the aging process? Well, mitochondrial dysfunction is included in one of the nine hallmarks of aging. And there are three main theories to support the link between mitochondrial dysfunction and aging. The first one of these theories was postulated more than 40 years ago, and that is the free radical theory of aging. And so what this theory states is that the mitochondrial dysfunction that occurs with age results in increased production of so-called reactive oxygen species that can cause further mitochondrial damage and also damage in the rest of the cell. And so it's thought that reactive oxygen species will be harmful for the cell if their levels exceed the capacity of the cell to effectively neutralise these reactive oxygen species and eventually convert them through to water via hydrogen peroxide as an intermediate. And so whilst at high levels, reactive oxygen species really could be detrimental for a cell, that doesn't necessarily mean that in the majority of cases, it's even a problem. 
And so the mitochondrial three radical theory of aging has been challenged more recently in light of the evidence showing that increased reactive oxygen species may prolong lifespan in yeast and worms. Moreover, genetic manipulations in mice that increase mitochondrial reactive oxygen species don't actually accelerate aging in the mice. And this is because reactive oxygen species also play essential roles in cellular signaling, with the general idea being that the presence of these reactive oxygen species promoting the upregulation of anti-stress responses within a cell so they can counteract any potential problems. And so because of this evidence, you might be feeling quite confused right now. Are reactive oxygen species good or bad? Well, this is the reason why, in the hallmarks of ageing, mitochondrial dysfunction is regarded as an antagonistic hallmark. And what that means is that it's one of the hallmarks that seem to have opposite effects depending on their intensity. So at low levels, they may mediate beneficial effects, but at very high levels, they can become deleterious. In the case of reactive oxygen species, that's when they're too high and overcome the cell's ability to neutralise them before they cause even more damage, and subsequently cellular death. But the other reason why reactive oxygen species were thought to be causing further mitochondrial dysfunction was due to their ability to cause mutations in mitochondrial DNA. However, more recent evidence seems to be showing that the increase seen in mitochondrial DNA mutations that occur during ageing don't seem to be due to oxidative damage. Instead, the mutations that seem to arise in mitochondrial DNA during age seem to occur by errors that occur during replication of mitochondrial DNA. And so this brings us on to the second theory of mitochondria with ageing, which is increased mitochondrial DNA mutations. And the first lines of evidence supporting mitochondrial DNA mutations with ageing comes from the fact that the levels of mitochondrial DNA deletions increase with age in several tissues such as the brain, retina, skeletal muscle, sperm, ovaries, liver and heart tissue. In addition, it's been shown that Parkinson's disease patients carry high levels of mitochondrial DNA deletions in some dopamine neurons. But some of the strongest evidence so far comes from studies on mice that are deficient in mitochondrial DNA polymerase gamma. And so this is the enzyme that replicates mitochondrial DNA. And when it's mutated in these mice, it increases the number of errors that it makes. And so more errors, more mutations. And what's seen in these mutant mice is that they exhibit aspects of premature aging and reduced lifespan. And that's in association with the accumulation of random point mutations and deletions in their mitochondrial DNA. Moreover, cells taken from these mice show impaired mitochondrial function, but interestingly, this isn't accompanied by increased reactive oxygen species, in line with what I previously said about the weaknesses in terms of the free radical theory of mitochondria and aging. But to really be certain that the increased load of mitochondrial DNA mutations is promoting the aging process would be to test genetic manipulations that can decrease the amount of mitochondrial DNA mutations and to see whether or not they can extend lifespan. So to do the opposite of what they've done in these mouse studies with mutations in DNA polymerase gamma. And so that leaves the third theory of mitochondria with aging, which is bioenergetic decline. And along with that, that also includes loss of mitochondrial integrity. And so as I mentioned earlier, the mitochondria isn't just involved in making ATP. It's also really important in coordinating apoptosis, a form of cell death. And so loss of mitochondrial integrity can also impact the response of cells to different stresses. And it can also impact signaling with the nucleus in terms of regulating nuclear gene transcription and also interactions with other organelles. And so the reduced efficiency of mitochondrial bioenergetics may come from a loss of the mitochondrial integrity and dysfunction of the complexes that help to generate energy, but also due to reduced biogenesis of mitochondria themselves. And interestingly, biogenesis of mitochondria is regulated in part by PGC1-alpha. And so PGC1-alpha is encoded in the nucleus and can mediate mitochondrial biogenesis by regulating the activity of several other transcription factors, notably NRF1 and NRF2, and also the mitochondrial transcription factor A. But the most interesting thing is that PGC1-alpha itself is regulated by CERT1, an NAD plus dependent sirtuin. And speaking of NAD+, a study came out last year that shows that niacin, an NAD plus precursor, could help improve muscle performance in adult onset mitochondrial myopathy. And so that's a disease caused by mutations in mitochondrial DNA. 
And so how much of this could have been mediated through SIRT1 activation and subsequently PGC1-alpha modulation is not very clear, especially because there's a sirtuin that's found in the mitochondria SIRT3, which could also be impacted by NAD plus supplementation. But it's also interesting to note that a clinical trial is currently in progress at Cambridge that's investigating how nicotinamide riboside might be impacting mitochondrial biogenesis. And so nicotinamide riboside is another NAD plus precursor that's previously been shown to increase the transcription of genes involved in aerobic respiration that occurs in the mitochondria and was shown to improve motor performance of myopathic mice. And so this clinical study is trying to investigate whether or not there's a mechanistic link between mitochondrial biogenesis and physiological function in humans with a similar mitochondrial disease. In a similar vein, endurance training and alternate day fasting may also be able to improve health span in part through their capacity to avoid mitochondrial degeneration. And this again could be linked back to activation of SIRT1 that is shown to be activated during fasting. But all of these different interventions could be impacting multiple different hallmarks of ageing. So what about targeting the mitochondrial DNA mutations themselves? Well, interestingly, a study came out last year that developed a base editor that could enter the mitochondria and edit bases within the mitochondrial DNA. Now, this is very early basic research work, but does raise hope for treating different mitochondrial disorders. But in addition to that, it could be used as a research tool to further understand the implications of mitochondrial DNA mutations. And that in itself could be useful for further underpinning the association between mitochondrial DNA mutations and the aging process. And so all in all, there's clearly a lot of work still to be done to understand the association between mitochondria and longevity. And that's in part due to the fact that mitochondria may be small, but they're mighty and are involved in so many processes within a cell. And dissecting its details will remain to be a challenge, but with new molecular tools, such as the base editing tool I just mentioned, it's hopeful that in the future we will begin to understand it better and can use the information to see how therapeutics can be developed to prevent bioenergetic decline and reduce the burden of mitochondrial DNA mutations. So with that, I'd like to thank the sponsor for this week's video, Longevity Technology, for which I am very grateful. Longevity Technology deliver high quality daily news and insights on research, investments and technologies that extend health span and lifespan. Find the link to their website in the description. So I hope you've learned something in this video. Thank you to my Patreon supporters and thank you for listening.